because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by him last time with S Jam's most finest member, Shane Watson. Is that Say a fair way to describe you? Saying that to me on Adam's birthday. That's, that's is it really? That's, that's quite a sad well, thing to it do. It was sarcastic as well, and yeah, yeah. obviously. Happy oh, it wasn't birthday. sarcastic. I can see that. I can see you it in your face. I can see it. <laughs> happy birthday to Adam. What's he turned? What's his age? Yeah, yeah. 47. Can you believe it? No, he hasn't. No, he's 47, honestly. I thought he was mid 40. I, I would give my right leg to look like him at 47, genuinely. That's the only compliment I'm going to give to him today, but yeah, I would give my right leg for him. Well, let's start with uh, this Saturday, we'll see Johnny Fisher out for you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, the fan base we know gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Southport, you guys are requested. Yeah. Why? Well, it's all about building a fighter, in my opinion. You know, get some Southpaws in early, foot one on his debut. It was a much lower level without uh, being disrespectful. Uh, Matt Gordon, and he didn't get many rounds in against him either. Eventually, um, the aim is for Johnny to be a championship level fighter sooner rather than later. And I feel like when you're going into the high level fights, it's important you have experience with southpaws, maybe some fighters that don't always fight on the inside, a bit more on the outside as well. And you're going to get that with Salas. He's quite well experienced as well. He's got some good wins over an unbelievable amateur in Kosi Sullivan. He didn't hit the pros game, maybe as the way Matchroom thought he would, but he's still a very good fighter. And uh, he's got a few other good wins on there as well. He took a few O's, so it's not going to be an easy night. The unfortunate thing is when you're fighting someone in the UK that no one's really heard of, the, the fans don't really get behind it. So this is a bit of like, I wouldn't say high risk, but it's a bit of a risk, but not really much reward. But the reward is, it's good for Johnny's development, and that's what's important moving forward. Well, let's talk about South Pauls, because there's been this, I know, misconception uh, about Joe Joyce is camping babies for the, the July Zhang fight that he never uh, sparred any southpaws and had no southpaws in his camp. So do you want to just clarify that? Hey, honestly, I would love to know who started this uh, rumour. <laughs> I'd love to know who started this rumour. Because it's absolutely outrageous. Like, who, someone just made that up. No one in the camp said it. Because he obviously did spar. He sparred the whole camp against southpaws. From so week one, he didn't spar at all because he trained and then he started getting into sparring then. Like three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sparring southpaws until the end of camp. What more do you want me to do? What, do you want me to bring an orthodox in to make you guys right? I don't know what you want me to do. Like, of course he sparred southpaws. He sparred high level southpaws as well. Like, what, what, at that level, do you think people mess around and play games? Joe pays his sparring partners a lot of money. So if he's going to be paying people a lot of money, he's going to want to get the right prep in. And that is what he did. We want to do spar orthodox to, to fight Southport. Like, to fight Southport, it's crazy what people make up. This comes to show that mental things that people make up when things don't go your way. It's crazy. But, um, but just to confirm, for anyone that is still concerned, as I found on social media the other day, they still are, Joe sparred against Southport the whole way throughout until the end. And if we do fight Zhang again, which is looking likely, of course, um, we'll be sparring Southport again, just in case anyone was concerned. Would you say the focus in, in Joe's camp uh, was the same as like the last few ones? Um, what I'm saying is, did he take his eye off the ball? Uh, maybe in some areas, maybe not. I mean, I always feel like there's things that we can improve. Even when we win, by the way, we always think we can improve. We always have meetings, what went well, what can we do better? And we did the same this time. Um, yeah, listen, it's difficult. Like, Joe isn't a massive, massive boxing fan. So, but he knew Joseph Parker, he's known him for years. He never used to spar him because he knew he was going to fight him one day. With Zhang, was he as aware of Zhang as maybe he was against Parker and maybe that? Maybe, maybe not. I guess we'll find out in the rematch, won't we? But um, if it does happen, yeah. Um, well, come on, it's happening, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I mean, it is obviously happening, oh, yeah, yeah, I may as well. I mean, Frank said it the other day, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, so said it yesterday. Not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not upsetting anybody, but yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, like, we have to see with the rematch, won't we? But, at the end of the day, may, maybe his eyes went off the ball, maybe he didn't, but we'll find out. But uh, there are definitely a lot of things that we could rectify in camp, and we're working towards doing that. Why did he lose so much weight? He lost nearly a stone. Do you know what? We, it's not really intentional, if I'm being honest. Like, there was no plan where we said, Joe's coming really light. We just kind of go whatever Joe sparred well at and what good at. It's not, it's not like lightweights where you have to make a specific weight. It's just kind of how the camp goes. It's about the same was for Parker. Like we didn't say, Joe, you have to be 19 and a half stone. Joe 
ate well and sparred well and he ended up 19 and a half stone. That was, that's honestly the way it is. But obviously maybe that's a little thing we're going to rectify moving forward. I'm not saying maybe Joe will come in light again, maybe he won't. But maybe we'll have a bit more of a breakdown of what weight it should be. It's just heavyweight to heavyweights at the end of the day. They're all big and strong men. But um, these are the things that we're going to go through in camp and see what we can work on moving forward. Shane, he's walked through uh, world-class heavyweights, the likes of Carlos Sackham, Joseph Parker, Christian Haver even was hit in flush early on and nothing really happened to Joe. Yeah. Um, the only time really where I've seen Joe be a bit jittery with his head movement and be quite quite mobile was against Daniel Dubois. He didn't take much punishment at all in that fight yeah. and he boxed really well. So, I mean, I don't think you're giving much away. I think Zhang's guys know what you guys are going to do in the rematch. Does he have to move his head more early on, especially? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what you have to do, you've got to remember, Zhang is a 20 stone man, very well experienced, a very big all round man, a very big, strong man, very well experienced, very underrated. He should be undefeated as well. And I just think no one really respected him or gave him a chance. I mean, from the public side as well. Zhang is an elite level everywhere. And I did say this to everyone before numerous times. I said it to Joe through camp as well. This guy is a real deal. And he will give anyone nightmares at elite level. Anyone. He knocks out Dillian White. He, he would knock out Derek Chisora. He would, I think, he'd probably knock out Anthony Joshua. Wilder and Fury, that's a very different thing. Because Wilder, it depends who hits who first, I guess. Yeah. And I think Wilder could probably clip him early. And um, Tyson Fury's a bit more of an all-rounded fighter. But still, he would give Tyson Fury a lot of problems as well. So um, he just go, didn't look. get the respect. And now he's got the respect. We're just talking about what went wrong for Joe. Against Zhang. Uh, Put a mic to him, Joe. Yeah. Listen, I like Shane Watson interviews. I think they're very funny because, and I like Shane Watson. You know why? Because he's very passionate and he really cares about the fighters. A yeah. little bit green sometimes, but I was. Everybody is. Joe Joyce got hit too much. Like, you can't. Every, all, people sell Joe Joyce on he just walks through you. And ultimately, he got hit too much. That's all. And actually, someone said to me the other day, if that fight would have been stopped, Joe would still be in there now fighting. Probably right. But after a while, especially at that age, you cannot afford to get hit by a massive heavyweight like Zhang. He's not the biggest puncher in the division, but he can really whack. I think he can beat him in a rematch. He just, he just said Zhang would knock out any Joshua. Well, you know, again, very green, but that's okay. <laughs> but listen, he could. He could. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, in a rematch, Zhang could flatten Joe Joyce in a round. And I believe AJ would flatten Joe Joyce in the round as well, but it doesn't really matter. Like, we've all got opinions because we're all fanboys of our individual clients. What I will say is, I think Joe Joyce wins a rematch. Okay. I think he'll stop Zhang in the rematch late between rounds 9 and 12. Good luck. Okay. I'm surprised he said that, to be fair. Yeah. Well, probably still knows there's some big fights to make in the pipeline <laughs> if, uh, if it puts Joyce to be wins. So. Oh, yeah. All right, Shane, well, on that note, um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Best of luck to Johnny Fisher this Saturday. I'm sure it'll be raucous support, as always, inside Wembley Arena. And uh, we'll catch a word afterwards, hopefully, all right? Top man. Thank you. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Barry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17, we nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.